Okay. And start recording on this. Okay, guys, uh, so um, we've got a selection of salad in the foreground. Um, this is just to make us, you know, feel like we're not in a lab the whole time. <laughs> um, we've got our Parkmore style um, piece of wood here um, and glass jar. So I'm going to see if I can come around the other side. <clears throat> Ryan's going to get all the safety equipment. So I don't know if you can see inside of that. Hopefully you can inside the glass jar. Um, but we have this uh, little dummy reactor made here, but it's actually got lithium aluminium hydride in there, and it's suspended on these ceramic pieces uh, that came off a dead silicon carbide element. Thank you, Ryan. And. We are going to try and warm this up to around about 200 degrees. So if you recall from our um, test previously with lithium aluminium hydride, where we were able to see the pressure, from about 120 to 190 degrees, most of the decomposition occurs. And so uh, that is when the highest pressure should be in the cell. And uh, Parkamov told us the other day that he uses a jar like this with his little reactor in a bed of alumina in a metal tray suspended in there. Um, and then <clears throat> the hydrogen, if it does leak, will come up to this sort of raised section here. And uh, we have a, a um, combustible gas analyzer here or detector. detector yep. That's right. Um, and uh, and uh, hopefully we can hear it. If, if that... Uh, doesn't do anything. We'll do the Parkamov test with the Batman tape repaired candle. Batman tape repaired Michael, candle. The, the wrapping was so hard to get off of it, it broke. <laughs> we, we do have a wick here. We have a wick here. Um, but uh, we have a lighter and a wick and, and a candle. The candle's like a little bit more rigid so we can get it in there when it's smoldering. And hopefully we don't see a hump at any point. That's the hope. So, uh, do you want to add, Ryan? We can put this right by the entrance here, and just if any hydrogen starts to leak out, we might be able to sniff it. Yeah. Do you not think it would be better there? Good idea. <laughs> look at that. Wow, look at that. Beautiful. Um, and then over here, we have the temperature of a thermocouple that uh, Alan placed very carefully earlier today in the center of this coil, which is very similar to the actual glow sticks that you've built, isn't it? Yes. Do you want to go and grab a glow stick? And then over here we've got a, a just a DC power supply, which we're going to drive this uh, coil to get it up to temperature. And we have some cilantro and cress, uh, some little tomatoes, big tomatoes, and uh, some... And, and this cilantro and, and cress, I think it's actually grown in your kitchen. Yep. Under sort of like a grow light. Yeah. Mm, so here's the real deal. It's live. It's fueled. It's fueled. Ready to make history. <laughs> so we have an Inconel wire here, uh, two ceramic outer outer uh, tubes, and that there to pump the heat, you know, part of the heat back into yeah. the core. And we'll put a thermocouple at the middle here. Yeah. And hopefully these suede locks, which are done in a similar way to the ones in there, will be able to you know, stop the gas coming out. Yeah, and there, there are spacers here so that the fuel load is uh, distributed in the center where the heat is. Yeah. Same with it's similar with this little one, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, let's go and see if everything's still going well on the live stream. I'll just check with Frank. Um, he's still hearing that. Good. This is where we have the... Uh, uh, so we can carbide element set up for if things go well.
Okay, so, um, <clears throat> everyone got the safety gear on? So at the moment we're room temperature, 21 degrees. Well, gloves on and we light the thing off. Wow. It's like a building if site. A chance to. <laughs> I, I have actually got safety gear. Hello. <laughs> right, and we've got a camera here re recording in uh, uh, 1080p, but at 50 frames a second. So if we do have a boom or a ksh, then uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to capture that on film. Yeah, that'll be a popular video. <laughs> right. Give me mixed motivations here, Bob. <laughs> Go on then. All right. Start it up, Ryan. Any idea how many <coughs> lots we'll want? A little. A tiny coil, so you just have to pay attention to the thing. I don't know how quick this heat up. We absolutely have no idea. Um, we're getting no amps. Oh, just a minute. It helps by enable the output. Yeah. Okay. One volt, half an amp. So it's about a two ohm coil. And uh, we've just got a slight rise in temperature there, 25 degrees already. We need more than half a watt for sure. This is the uh, 24 cam. It's looking through. Okay. Let's start with looking through tripods. Eight watts. And we'll see where that takes us. It's about 34 degrees, 35 degrees. So the first uh, interesting point should be around about 120 degrees. That's when I rolled on my sleeves down because I don't want pock marks in them. <laughs> Two degrees. So, just to let you know, what we don't want is to hear that thing doing anything more than its very measured pace right now. That's what I'm talking about is the combustible gas detector. 65 degrees, 66, 67. Now, part of the reason why Parkamov uh, uses um, uh, a very long heat up uh, process. Well, listen to that. Listen to that. There's a slight increase in the pace of the. Uh, can you hear it? Did you hear that speed up? A little bit, yeah. It could be something else. Just as the wires start to get a little yeah, warm. There could be traces on the wire itself. From the no one fought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when it hits about 120, that's when the lithium aluminium hydride might start to decompose. That's right, that's about that temperature we saw it when we previously did the experiment. Yeah. yeah. Well, my point was if we're going to approach a. a a little slower if we want. If there was a little bit of the dust on the wire itself <coughs> from the loading process, it, it would see the heat much faster than the thermocouple. Yeah. 
yes, there probably would be a tiny trace amount of dust. Yeah. And it would break down much sooner. So we're at 99 degrees, 100 degrees. How much power now? Uh, Eight watts. Yeah. You have a nice two ohm coil. Yeah. So, Alan, tell us about this coil. What did you make it from? I think it's the leftover piece of the Inconel 601 wire. Oh, it is? Yeah. So, this is Inconel? We did a test winding. Yeah, yeah. And this was the cutoff piece, and it happened to be the right. Oh no, this is the the test piece was way too short. That's right. So this is the piece from the uh, color calibrator coil that broke in transit on the way here, and I clipped off the densest part of the coil and stretched it out, and it's still intact. And so that coil has seen a lot of heat already. It's well broken in. And as you mentioned, your color calibrator, some people got a chance to watch that earlier today. Um, it was quite a fascinating experiment, and, and right at the end we had a, a really big bonus, didn't we? After it cooled down, we took a close look at the materials, and the first thing we noticed was the high emissivity coating, uh, which is rated at 1,000 or 1,100 Celsius, does indeed change uh, at even a lower temperature, as it ages, it changes color from a black to a greenish tint. And you can see the progression of the temperatures across the test bar uh, by the color increments. Then we looked at the uh, little dabs of castable alumina cement that I put on there. And you could also see a color change in those that Bob had talked about. Uh, and it's quite striking. It reinforces what we appear to see in the data, which is that the emissivity changes as the material heats up above, say, 900 C. Uh, it seems to go through a phase change, and it uh, initially goes from a almost white, a bone white, to a grayish color at maybe four or 500 C. And then as it heats above 900, it turns absolutely bone white. Uh, and there apparently is a drop in emissivity as it reaches that temperature. Uh, we have good data that supports that, and it bears further looking. But uh, there's something going on with that material at high temperatures. And, Bob, we concluded something important. Yeah, I, th I think that you need to really understand the material before you're going to be able to use emissivity values. And also, the the reactor that you're going to be using needs to be uh, basically treated, heat treated, to the temperature it's going to operate to. Otherwise, you're going to have it maybe changing its emissivity uh, during its working life. Well, further testing would be needed, but uh, I think it seems like a permanent change happens to the material. Mm -hmm. Uh, to test that, we would have to go back and start looking at emissivity at lower temperatures after it's been cured. Mm -hmm. If we find that the emissivity change is permanent, then pre-baking at the highest anticipated temperature would stabilize it, and then you could get meaningful temperature values of it through the entire range. So I think, actually, we've gone over 120 degrees, haven't we? Is it leveled off there, Ryan? What do you think? No, it's still climbing slowly. Still climbing. But we have gone over 120 degrees, so... Yeah, it's saying 130 <clears throat> right now, and not a whiff of hydrogen from the detector. So this would mean that the, the, the first temperature where the lithium aluminium hydride is breaking down hasn't caused uh, a leak. Yeah, well, it would not that we can detect yet, anyway. No. And I've detected some very small leaks on swage lock fittings and vacuum fittings. So I think the most nervous one of us about <laughs> around here is uh, Alan, because this is really his baby. <laughs> I'm pretty confident, because when I tested this initially, I pumped it down on my vacuum system to about 30 microns, which is a pretty serious uh, roughing vacuum 
that's 30 millionths of a meter of, of uh, mercury. Uh, it, it's equivalent to a, a millionth of an atmosphere, something like 30 that. 30 millitor is another way to, not, yes, 30 another way to say it. And I pumped it down to that. I closed the valve and I left it overnight. And the leakage was on the order of one or two microns of pressure per hour, which is probably just what's called off-gassing from the stainless steel parts and the various components. Uh, it indicates a minuscule leak. That's that's a, a vacuum tight system. Uh, then I put uh, 120 psi of air into the tube, and I put a coil around it and heated it up to about 700 C, and I saw the pressure go up to uh, almost 200 psi, uh, and and so uh, that pressure held for many hours at that temperature and didn't leak out. So with those two tests, I'm confident that this sealing method is a good one. The only doubt was because hydrogen is so prone to leakage. The, the molecules are so small that it will leak where nothing else will. And so this is an important last test to confirm that this sealing technique is a workable one for these kinds of, of reactors. And so the, the key aspect here is that you are effectively pressure welding uh, and a uh, aluminum ferrule to the alumina. You can tube. say aluminium, Bob. We'll yes, I can. We'll so can you. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and and what 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 gave you the inspiration to use the uh, aluminum? Well, I've been using ferrules for vacuum work, and I was familiar with how they operated, and and I thought aluminum is a soft metal, and it's going to smear. It's going to move under pressure especially with a, a very shallow taper, a wedge shape, a cone that's inside of the nut as you tighten it. It's going to wedge that aluminum against the ceramic. And the ceramic is very hard. It's not going to go anywhere. And if anything moves, it's going to be the aluminum. So the aluminum metal being soft is going to be forced into the pores of the ceramic to such an extent that it will actually be a weld, pressure weld. And it seemed to work. When, when you take one of these joints apart, you see a little ring uh, less than a millimeter wide of aluminum that's been embossed into the ceramic. And you can't feel that metal with a, a sharp knife scraping across it. Uh, that means that there's no, uh, no metal deposited above the surface of the ceramic. It's actually embedded into the grains of the ceramic material, at least within the limits of a uh, uh, maybe a tenth of a thousandth of an inch. We'd have to look with a very, very good microscope to see what's going on there. So where are we at now? We're about in the middle of the, well, the sort of lower end still of the range at which the lithium aluminium hydride breaks down, 141 degrees, but is it settling, do you think? I thought it had settled about 138 a few moments ago, and I was going to suggest turning it up a little bit. So I think we're good to turn it up. Okay, so we're going to very do, do a little subtle tweak here, aren't we? There. One volt makes 12.4 watts, which is actually a big step compared to eight. Put it's it a 12 and a half percent step, isn't it? Let's put it on fine. The power goes up as the square of voltage. So. Uh, Let's go to 10 watts. That would be a 30% step in power. So I'm going to pause the main camera here for a little while because uh, we've got only a... Uh... Okay, 10.0 watts. Four and a half volts. Okay, because we've only got like uh, two minutes left on this uh, camera, so we're recording on the uh, live stream as well. So I was wondering, uh, I'm sure the viewers uh, would like more clicking noises, um, if we should have the Geiger counter here. I mean, we've got lithium aluminium hydride. and we bring it over. I mean, it would just add, it would be like a whole load of crickets, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone loves that. Everyone, everyone loves the, the bing, 
the being everyone's getting ready to write please can you make it very close to the microphone <laughs> so Alan there's another test you did um, to kind of understand the, uh, the 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 ability of these swage lock valves to uh, hold on to the uh, alumina there's something very interesting that happens with this material as the hydrogen comes out the increasing pressure doesn't slow the reaction down because it's a, a chemical decomposition. It's not. It's a phase change, right? It's a phase change. It's not like gas coming out of a solution where you can force it back into solution with the increasing pressure. It's going to keep coming out until all of the hydrogen has been released, which means you can build up very high pressures. And uh, Parkamov discussed this. And uh, he calculated that we could expect pressures of up to 1,000 psi, maybe even higher. He said 100 atmospheres. And we actually saw 35 atmospheres in our first test uh, yeah. where we had the pressure. Yeah, and that corresponds to about 500 psi. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of pressure. So we calculated, or I calculated, the amount of force that would actually be exerted on that fitting that's plugging the tube trying to pop it off of the tube. And I calculated at 1,000 atmospheres, it would be about 24 kilograms, which would be 60 pounds or so. And so I made some hardware. I took two fittings, attached them to stainless steel tubes that were bent into hooks. And I hung one end from a support. And on the other end, I put a, a, a scale weight, a, a basket, basically. And I started putting chunks of lead and cast iron, anything heavy I had around. And I kept adding weights until I ran out of things to add at about 34, which is over 70 pounds, pulling those fittings off of the tube. And it just sat there happily, swinging in the breeze. I remember seeing those photos. It, yeah. it even looked like the thing was bending, but it wasn't falling off. At one point, the stainless steel tubing hook bent. <laughs> uh, but the tube didn't break and the fittings didn't budge and, and that convinced me that the the wedging effect of these fittings and the pressure welding creates a joint that's basically unbreakable. You'd have to physically pull the ceramic apart in order to break that joint loose unless you loosen the nut. And uh, you got the uh, alumina ceramic from where? Uh, these are rods from McMaster Car. I don't know who made them for McMaster Car, who are distributors, mm -hmm. but they're 99.5 alumina, which is a very pure grade. It's not the ultimate grade, but it's very strong. It's uh, it's nicely made stuff. It's almost impossible to machine it unless you have diamond tools. And you've used something like a Dremel to cut I, them, I use yeah? a die grinder or a, a high-speed Dremel with a, a diamond face uh, cutting wheel on it. There's one sitting right there, Ryan. You want to hand that to me? Um, yeah, here's here's the tool. And these blades are replaceable. They're about $20 each, I think. I've gone through a couple of them cutting tubes in my experiments. And we also have a wonderful tool here. It's a diamond-faced sharpening grinder for car, uh, tungsten carbide, silicon carbide lathe tools. That's over in the other end of the building. And so after I cut these tubes, I'm able to face the ends of them off to make them nice and smooth again. Because as you cut with this, the last little bit wants to fracture, and you're left with a, a little piece sticking out of the tube. So all of these pieces, I just cut them with this and face them off on the diamond sharpening stone. So where are we? 170 degrees. Okay, the roaming cam's going to lose battery in a little while. I'm going to see if I can go and strap it to my laptop. Um, yeah, yeah, let's see what I can do. But it seems to be good right now, doesn't it? It's still that nice, regular tick, tick, tick from this combustible gas. Unless, of course, it's coming straight out the ends and coming up and collecting at the top there and just not yet enough to come out. You just don't think that would happen. Mm -hmm. In your experience, which is extensive. Yeah, yeah I, well, well, there's a source of heat in there, so there's lots of turbulence, and it's going to be well made. And hydrogen just moves so fast, it fuses very rapidly.
Then we are probably in the 400 to 500 PSI range. Ooh. A lot of it's going to go into the nickel, though, isn't it? Well, once it gets hotter. What temperature does the adsorption happen? Um, that's actually around 120 in the powders that I've played. The finer the powder, the lower it starts. And this is 2 micron powder? Yeah. Which isn't so, terribly fine in the scale of things, right? Yeah, in the scale of these powders. So Ryan went away. I brought a bigger battery for uh, the phone. It's called a MacBook Pro. And uh, he's put the Geiger counter in there to add some extra light relief from the uh, combustible gas analyzer detector, rather. And uh, we're at 173 now, so really we should start to see... Yes, I think it's leveled off. Okay.
Can you take a picture of that, Alan? So do we want to put a mix of uh, smoke and paper in there? Back. <laughs> the hot 
paraphrase. So there we go. We sell our claims to showing there's no highs in, in that cell, in, in that um, claim for clinical treatment. And uh, that being uh, come up with that sort of idea. Yeah. Excellent. That's like a double test of life. And it was something besides just standing there. Going, oh my god, this is making so low, it's really cooling. <laughs> you shouldn't be responsible. <laughs> we, we can be honest. We could just go outside and have a glass of wine. You should see what I'm like. I mean, uh, Celsius. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Celsius. I mean, it's like, what was it in, in the other one? Uh, we were saying that we could have a glass of wine or a glass of wine. Yeah, so there's very good reason why um, wine would last for a year and a half to a year. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't even know what it's good for. Yeah. I have to drink it on my side too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're not that bad now, are we? Yeah. Oh, you're not. No, we got plenty of time to do that. Really, really, honestly, congratulations. Can we get one of those? I mean, you know, it's around the first of the year. Yeah. It doesn't look like it. Uh, it's a little very fresh. It's like a pickle. Yeah. Well, we'll see what this one's got to do. Yeah. Every time we use the nose closer, it adds up to it. So we could try and say that we could do this through the pickle. Many of those are great, but not all of them are are good. But we can always get that other one out of the pickle as well. Um, and so I, and so I can't really believe it. That's what you want. That's what you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alan made this one today. Can be silly 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 Not really know what that's for. Someone just keeps saying that it's not for the heart. Under under the sun, so really, it's just a little bit more than the maximum of what you can do. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of extra time. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a sort of experiment.
Yeah. 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 I am stuck. Yep. And so it's not enough time to do anything productive with this, but that's not the point of the lesson. I'm not sure I need to react that much. So let's have a look at the temperature of that thing. It's at zero, which is always good in terms of that. Ryan, are you putting that power up? Oh, man. <laughs> Busted. Busted. <laughs> he, he thought, if I can convince them to go over to the silicon carbide element, maybe I can put the power up. Well, the good news is... The external temperature, um, which is not the external temperature, it's down to 37. So we can comfortably put it in. And I will do the honors. And you want to go uh, hot zone is right about here. So, just need to crank up a bit of power in there then. About where we want. Is it on? No, turn the switch on. On? You want to bring it up to 200? We had a reference point for that. Uh, that was probably around about 60 watts. Well, it's, I'm not seeing anything at the moment because it's actually wired in. I didn't wire it into something else. No, it's wired in. Is it? Remember, this is on like 10 watts, yeah. 10, 10 kilowatts. So. so this has to be sent out to OVC because the resistance will drop if it melts up. Mm -hmm. So, your first power set was about 10, uh, 70 watts. 
I don't understand that. I'd, I'd, I would say it's really not that bad. Okay. Anyway, I don't want to get off here again. Yeah. It's rising now. That one, it's centered on a girl. Yeah, he mad it to, um, and flash my camera. Yeah. Oh, I've seen the yellow um, temperature shooter. The, the flare yeah. camera. No, the infrared gun. Oh no, we were using that the other day, weren't we? Um, and here's another close up of the whole assembly. If you want to see that. Yeah. Yeah, so technically, well, I think we'll have a, a bit of a precursor to that because it's not completely linear. I might make the uh, sleep tablet and put the equipment in it and try it out. But I'm worried that it's just going to be too much of a problem. But I can't hear you with uh, your speaker. Should we be doing a... Uh, So what we're going to do is sort of dial down the temperature uh, and then do a, do something interesting. Do you want to do something like that? By the way, everyone, the, you, you can follow me on Facebook. I've got a bunch of videos on there. If you search for Carl Hoffman, you can find me. I post a lot of videos and stuff like that. And one final note with Carl Hoffman is he's a So the risk is that you get a certain amount of noise in your bells that you can easily uh, fix. <laughs> the place, although I don't know how sensitive the email is, it's not a good conductor at all. What is the problem with you? It's just a big thing in the brain. How, how am I hearing? Well, 
Thanks for reminding me because you don't understand me in your own class. I'm trying to wake up sitting first on you. But it would be a, a force of the bunch of certain children and that would have a huge Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
the food because <clears throat> of spice that's not necessarily in the spice book. Uh, also, spice that you know, can be uh, a very intense thing to work with. And then that's what we they use that stuff to make bullet proof soft bullets, which they can make into bullet proof. Yeah, so The cherry is seasoned. Okay, so what temperature are we at? We're at 145 degrees. Interesting. Ryan, would you... Look, every time we leave him alone, with the, he's, he's playing around with the power. <laughs> Someone's going to do it. Um, could we ask you to bring over the... Uh... Mind the lead, guys. Uh, no, leave it going. Well, we could let it dial back and do that Russian guy test, the one that let it go cooler. And then it got hotter on its own. Okay, so. Let's see here. Okay. And we are currently sitting, and I just lost the camera. Damn it. How did I just lose the camera? How did I lose the camera? Sorry, just lost the camera there for a little while. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, just lost the camera there for a little while. Apologies for that. Moving it around. I'm going to just drop it onto the table here. Uh, oh, gone again. Sorry about that. The USB extension lead, we've got two of them, and one of them's a little bit dodgy. It's amazed it's last this long. Okay, I was just looking at the hugnet board there, that's not much fun. There we go. So, I wonder if we can get around there a little bit closer. So that's the... Uh, The hot core is it's 165 degrees centigrade at the moment. So then what I might do is add a few more. Uh, just going to add a few more aspects to this. Uh, 
in the Jim Jurgens. So you can see here, 167 degrees centigrade, it's the internal temperature there, so that lithium aluminium hydride in there is already breaking down. I'm going to add in the power here to the uh, feed. It's looking pretty good, my friend. Just trying to uh, add in a little bit more data for people. It's got the hog net going in there and the power. So in, in some respects, this is another leak test, um, but this is actually on a cause tech tube, a single-ended tube. Now, my, Mac Mastercard don't do the single-ended tubes, do they? No, they do not. Um, and so this actually only needs one. Um, it's a quite expensive tube. How much was it? Those are the ones that board materials for the Rosano test. Yeah. And they're usually like sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. Yeah. Okay, sixty dollars. And then <clears throat> the advantage is uh, you know you've only got one end to seal up. Which is <laughs> you also you can also insert it. You, you can insert it into this uh, uh silicon carbide yeah. element. Yeah. Right. So we've got a source for Chinese made Oh, I'll, I'm not sure they're getting any of this audio, so we might have to say all that again. Yes. Uh. Uh. Hmm. Uh, uh. Okay, guys, sorry about the drop in audio. So, uh, let's switch that back to there. Okay, so um, we are running currently at 180 degrees. We're about at the top range of the lithium aluminium hydride breakdown. Um, and Ryan's just asked the question, do we want to uh, bring over the uh, combustible gas detector? And I think we do. Probably. Yeah. So we're having a discussion about the reactor tube here. It, it, this one is not from McMaster Car. This is from... Um, Cause tech. Cause tech. It's about sixty something dollars. It's in the bill of materials for the Lugano test, and it only requires.
Sorry, we lost the camera and a bit of audio there. Uh, moving this USB lead around. So Ryan has moved over the combustible gas detector to see if we are going to be leaking any from this tube. And we're about 188, coming up to 190 degrees in the internal temperature there which means we're about the peak of the first breakdown of lithium aluminium hydride. How much uh, mix of lithium aluminium hydride and nickel powder did we get into this cell? I think it was only 0.36 grams. Mm -hmm. If I remember the numbers right. Alan has them written down. I'm gonna put a time on the feed here. Okay. Uh, So we're over 192 degrees internal temperature there now on the silicon carbide element. You could mind the car from all bucket test if you wanted to. You don't have to do it with the dirt to do it. No. We're leaving the, uh, the chemicals here. Unless you want to carry something away, I, I don't know if I can ship this to you. I suppose I could.
these are oh, what you compensate them.
I do. I made two rounds. And uh You're definitely not really reach a FedEx, so. yeah, uh, this box uh we need a tipping label on. My address is on the top of it. All you have to do is copy that. What's that? Okay, we're at 213 degrees. I'm going to crank it up a little. Um, 
Yes, and the uh, the little key thing the little. is 1248. No, it's house. not. Oh. Oh, oh, that's right. That's a binomial progression. Yes. Okay, so the uh, B-type thermocouples just coming in, where it's registering 246 degrees. The K-type internally is saying 213. So we're going to crank this up a little. So 100 watts. Mm -hmm. 213 degrees there. Mm -hmm. Good. Really, I mean, well done, Alan. Well Everything, done. Everything's working. Yeah. So don't stay out too late, boys. Go. Okay. I mean, at the moment we're on 232. <coughs> 232 inside. Well, the, the B type has come online. It's a little hotter. 271. Uh, How do we want to ramp the temperature? What I'd like to do is to ramp it up to somewhere between, uh, somewhere below 350. Let okay. it sit there for a little while. So you upped it to 110 watts at that steep angle, right? <coughs> yeah.
What was it from before that? It was at uh, 40... What's no? We're heading into immediate step. It's on the video. I'm okay. not doing snapshots on this. Okay. I'm recording a video. In fact, it's the same video that's been recording for an okay. hour and a half. Uh, I won't tell. I'll tell you what it's from then. I'll talk back before I can do that. I will stop the recording and start the recording so that we don't